It's Each here, and welcome back to another episode of How to Animate a Gotcha Scene Live 2D Tutorial Series, where I show you my process on rigging models and making animations. This marks the second segment of the series, as we finish the rigging with episodes 1 to 3. And this time, I'll be teaching you guys how to animate your rigged models. If you haven't watched the rigging process yet, I recommend checking out the first parts of this series before moving on. I'll leave a link to the first three episodes of this series in the description below, as well as the eye icon on the top right of this video. If you do have a rig model now, or if you've gone through the rigging phase, let's dive into the video! Before we get into the actual tutorial, I'm gonna give a brief overview on the animator mode to make things easily understandable. By default, whenever you open Live 2D, you're always in the modeler mode. To create an animation file, go to File, New, then Animation. A dialog should appear to ask you what settings you want your animation file to be. Since, assumingly, we're making a video, click on the video option. You can make changes to the scene by going to the inspector palette. For me personally, I usually have the size of the scene at around 1440p for that crisp quality, and the frame rate at around 60fps. Not really necessary for the general movement, as I think 30 FPS would work just fine. I'm just very particular when it comes to the mouth animation, which will be in another video. Similar to the modeler mode, you can customize the layout to your liking to make things easier for you to navigate through things. To do so, navigate to the top left corner of the interface, click on Window, select Workspace, then Workspace Settings. Click on the Add button, name your workspace, then click OK. Right after that, you can just drag and drop the panels and tabs to customize how you want your layout to look like. Feel free to take my layout as a reference. Once you're done, click on Workspace again. Then this time, click on Update Initial Layout. And your workspace should be saved. Now you can just drag your Live 2D model to Live 2D. Okay, now that we have our animation file ready, let's talk about how animation works in Live 2D. The software uses a timeline-based animation system, meaning we create keyframes at different points to control the movement and transformation of our model over time. This is where you'll be placing keyframes to animate different parts of your model, in the timeline. For example, if you want your character to blink, you'd set a keyframe on the eye parameter at the start of the animation, Another keyframe a few frames later, where the eyes are closed. Then another keyframe a few frames after that, where the eyes are back open. If you want the animation to be longer or shorter, just highlight the keyframes and adjust them according to your liking. Whoops! Looks like the model's length time wasn't as long as the whole scene. You can extend or shorten the length time of the model by dragging its endpoint left or right. Similarly, you can extend or shorten the length of the whole scene by dragging the work area's endpoint left or right. Oh, make sure to drag the playback's end as well. But what if you set keyframes for some or all of the parameters in your model as a starting point? Do you have to manually click on each parameter? Well, no, that would be very tedious and frustrating. <laughs> Fortunately, there's a shortcut for that. All you have to do is hold down Ctrl or Command, then click on the parameter folders you want to set keyframes for, or click on the live 2 parameters to set it for all the parameters. You can also do this for individual parameters. In Live 2D, you can also change the easing of the animations by using the graph. Just select the graph button, then the parameters you want to adjust the easing of. There are four commonly used modes for easing, linear, smooth, step, and inverse step, all having different ways of easing.
You can also customize the graphs with the custom graph button. If you click the drop down arrow next to it, you can see even more types of easing. Now, let's try to animate some common animations. Starting off with a simple, basic walking animation. The parameters you need will obviously be the arm parameters, shoulder and forearm parameters, both left and right, the parameters for the legs, the thigh and foot parameters, the angle Z and body Z parameters, and also optional if you have parameters for the positioning, we're going to use the Y position, but you can just simply use the placement and transparency. Now, something to keep in mind with walking, the legs and the arms should move in opposite directions. I've seen some animations that have the limbs move in the same direction and it often comes off as unnatural, plus realistically, even physically difficult to do. Here are the four poses that we will base the walking animation on. You can use these as reference. If you're using a front-facing model like I am, you have to set the model to facing the side. So, hold down Ctrl or Command and click on the Live 2D parameters to set a starting point. Then adjust your model to make it face to the side, either left or right. If you're using a model that's already in 3 port facing or side view, then just skip the step. Once that's done, follow along the reference and set up the first post on the starting point. Now skip a few frames ahead and do the next post. Hold down Ctrl or Command and click on the Live 2D parameters again to set the keyframe for all the parameters. Why are we doing this here too? This is so that we don't have to worry about unset keyframes in the process that can potentially make the animation look off. Now do the same thing for the third and fourth poses of the walking animation. And for the last step, copy the first pose of the walking animation, then paste it a few frames ahead of the last pose. That's the first cycle of the walk. Since this is a looping animation, you can copy and paste the keyframes or make a template of the walk cycle. To make a template, highlight all the keyframes of the walk cycle, then navigate through the template tab, then click on the button on the bottom right corner to create a template. Once you have that, just use it however you like. The running cycle follows the same principle. The only difference is that it has a more exaggerated movement and a faster pace. So just do the same thing.
Now, here's a basic hair animation. This is just a matter of offsetting the main movement and the swaying motions. While this can easily be done by using the physics, this can be helpful to add more life to the character in context with the environment they're in, which would really depend on the scene you're going for. The parameters that you will need are just all of the hair parameters. First, set keyframes for the main hair movement. Move a few frames forward and shift the hair to your liking. Then copy and paste the first frame of the main hair movement. Now, do the same thing for the hair sway parameters, but this time, make sure that they're in between the keyed main hair movements. Now, same thing as the walking animation, you can copy and paste this multiple times, or set a template for it. Highlight the keyframes of the hair, then click on the button on the lower right corner of the template tab. And there you go, the movement of the hair is done. That's all I have for now. On the next episode, we'll be talking about how to do mouth movements and lip syncing, which is probably something you guys had been asking for a while now. <laughs> I hope this tutorial helped you out in some way, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay amazing and God bless. Siege out.